The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Festool. Faster, easier, smarter. And by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. Now the next adjustment that we can make is the, the blade bevel angle. Right now it's set at 90 degrees. I have it all the way up as high as it can go and I can double check it. Now the way I do this is using a machinist square or you can use an adjustable square as long as you have a really uh, decent quality one that you know is 90 degrees and I sight down from the front. And what I'm looking for is the little tiny strip of light that peeks through. And when that square is uh, perfectly even with the blade, the light goes away. And honestly, that's really all it takes. No feeler gauges, don't get real fancy with it. Just wait for that light to disappear and you're exactly 90 at that point. Now, most saws have a stop that's inside the cabinet that, that stops, basically stops the whole, the whole unit from going any further and it locks you down at a preset uh, position for 90 degrees and you also have one at 45 because those are the two uh, most common angles that we're going to use so that way you can just kind of blindly turn it all the way do 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 till it stops now we're at 45 bring it all the way back do 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 till you're at 90. The problem that I have with that is a lot of times dust, debris, oil, residue, whatever gets stuck uh, on either the the unit that's moving or the uh, stop pin that's in there. So although I do adjust it now and make sure that it's exactly 90 degrees, the other one is exactly 45, I know that over time that's not going to give me exactly the accurate number that it once did. So every time I change my blade and bring it back to the home position at 90 degrees, I will always check it with a square to make sure it's dead on. And same thing goes for 45. I never assume that it truly is 45. I use anything that I have that's at a 45 degree angle and use that to check it and make sure it's exactly the angle that I want. So I don't really stress out about setting those two things up dead on accurately because I'm never going to count on them in the first place. Now let's take a look at the insert. See, as you push wood over the table saw, you want to make sure the most important thing really is right in the beginning and right at the end. You don't want to get caught on the insert and at the end, you don't want to get caught on the table. So most inserts have little hex screws. You can use a little Allen wrench to make the adjustments and raise and lower it. So what I like to do is span a straight edge across and you can hear that. That means that there's some play in there. So you want to make adjustments slowly but surely. This one has one, two, three, five points of adjustment uh, that you could sort of move the insert around however you like. And uh, once you have it, so that it's below or perfectly even with the surface, you are in good shape. Now this may just be the easiest adjustment we're gonna make on this saw. The fence has a couple set screws uh, here. These are actually just this sort of plastic or nylon material and they just take a little hex key. You can turn them left and right. And what it does is adjust the face of these screws and how they rest on the fence itself. So basically, in a nutshell, it's raising either the left, the left wing or the right wing, which in turn adjusts uh, the angle of attack here. So what we're looking to do is have this, of course, just like the blade, be perfectly 90 degrees to the table. And from what I see here, I've got a little bit of a line. I can see some light peeking through the bottom. So what I need to do is raise up the left side. So it doesn't take much, just a light little turn until the light goes away. Okay, now you'll notice when you tighten it down, it may shift a little bit. So it's a good idea to make the adjustment first, tighten it down, and then fine tune it when it's nice and tight. And that looks great. Now one of the most important adjustments that we're gonna to make today is the angle of the fence. We want it to be parallel with the blade and also parallel with this miter slot. Now the cool thing is since we've already adjusted the miter slot to the blade, we can use the miter slot as our reference point to adjust the fence. And honestly, personally, I find it a lot easier 
to set the fence to the miter slot than the fence to the blade itself. Okay, so all of the methods that we discussed before when we set the miter slot angle, all of those methods are still applicable to uh, setting the fence as well. So if you have a dial indicator, um, if you want to use a square, whatever you have on hand, all of those methods are just as valid for this as well. Now for me, the adjustable square method is the way that I'm going to go. Okay, so I will take the fence over. I also want to point out here, there are a few adjustment screws on the fence itself. You see we've got one here and one here. And what that does is apply pressure to pads on the inside of this piece of uh, angle iron and it pushes up against the fence rail, thereby creating you know, sort of an angle one way or the other. So that's what you have to get into your head, which one of these you tighten in order to get the result that you're looking for. So let's see how far off we are, let's see if we got lucky. Basically, I'm gonna keep it about three or four inches from the miter slot, loosen the square, and I'm gonna push the square all the way up against uh, this side of the slot, the right side and also push the adjustable uh, ruler into the fence. Fence is locked down at this point as well. If you make this adjustment with the fence loose, by the time you lock it down, everything's gonna change. So you, you have to make these adjustments in locked position, otherwise it's not gonna work. Okay, so we're pretty, pretty tight up against the fence at this point. And as I move it forward, all the while pushing in this direction, I see the gap opens up a little bit to the point where we're just guessing maybe we have a 16th of an inch out. It's not bad. I didn't really make any adjustments yet. So um, what I need now is for the front of the fence, or the, I guess it depends on which side you're standing on, this side of the fence needs to go that way, just a hair. So in order to do that, I either loosen this screw or I tighten that screw. And I am going to opt for tightening this screw and it really does not take much. That was maybe an eighth of a turn. And we'll do the same test. Okay, it didn't really move at all, which tells me that this screw is probably not even engaging uh, the material here. So I'll just keep going with a light turn each time. That time I went about a quarter turn If you go too far, you could always go back. Ooh, I think we may have nailed it. See, it's even all the way across. There's no gaps. There's, it's not forcing the uh, square to the left. Okay, now sometimes, if in this case, it, it looks perfect. And sometimes it's actually easier to visualize if there's a little bit of a gap there, because then you could, with your eye, monitor the gap and see if it gets smaller or larger. So I'm gonna do just that. A few taps, and I've created probably another sixteenth of an inch gap. But now we're going to make sure that that gap is consistent from the back to the front. That looks pretty good. Now, could you be more accurate than that? Sure. You know, there are tools out there that exist, and if that's the type of um, work you like doing and you want to spend more time getting this really, really dialed in, have at it. You know, this is, the, this is your fun time if that's the kind of, you know, a lot of us are sort of that engineering personality and enjoy uh, spending time setting up machines to be as precise and accurate as possible. And that's perfectly fine. I just personally think that this is enough for most woodworkers, and you don't really need to go any further than that uh, to produce quality work. So uh, it's up to you how far you want to go, but for uh, the Wood Whisperer shop, that is enough. Now the final adjustment that I'm going to make today is the riving knife. I want to make sure that this riving knife is in the same plane as our blade, otherwise it's not going to do its job. Uh, if it's too far out this way, it's going to get in the way of the cut. If it's too far this way, it's not going to stop a kickback from occurring. So it's very important that it's lined up. What I like to do is grab my straight edge and I line the straight edge up with the teeth. Okay, so make sure the front and the back are both resting on one of the uh, carbide teeth. And then I make the adjustments. Now every saw is going to be different. So make sure you read your uh, manufacturer's instructions for how to make that adjustment. Um, on this one, there is, what else, a hex key, uh, four adjustment screws that sort of allow you to control the tilt and uh, the total direction of where that uh, thing is lined up. So 
Again, you just make sure it's nice and even with those teeth and you should be good to go. It's a relatively simple adjustment. Usually you set it once and never really have to set it again unless you change blades or uh, go to a thin kerf blade or something like that. Uh, but that's really, um, that's about it. But a very, you know, very simple, but very, very important that that gets adjusted properly. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for table saw tune-up and setup. Now, it's no secret that if you want to take your craft to the next level, you have to know how to tune up your tools. Uh, you know, it's, it's really our connection between us and the material. So if those things aren't tuned up, the road to better craftsmanship is going to be a very bumpy one. And if you have everything tuned up really nicely, it's going to be so easy. You know, you don't want to have to blame the tool for, uh, for something going wrong. You want to be able to blame yourself and see where you can learn how to do things better. I remember the first time somebody uh, allowed me to use a well-tuned plane compared to the little block plane that I had, my little Stanley that I, I never did anything with. I took it out of the box and started using it, never even sharpened the blade. Uh, you know, it was a night and day difference and it was a real eye-opening experience. And the same thing applies to our power tools. We need to keep them tuned up, we need to set them up right the first time, and we need to remove that as a variable for what might go wrong in, uh, in our future learning experiences. And once you do that, life is good. So thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time. Take care.